Hey, what's up, my YouTube fam? I'm back. This is Larry with Invest You Build Your Credit and Well. Today, we're going to have a very good class. We're going to be talking about a 1099C. We're going to be talking about the myth. We're going to be talking about the misinformation that's put out there about a 1099C. We're going to be talking about what does the court say uh, about a 1099C. We're going to explain to you what is it, what is a 1099C, uh, why is it even processed, uh, why did the IRS process here? How does that affect you? We're gonna just kind of cover everything. Uh, the one thing about me doing credit repair is I like to go back a lot of times and what does the court say about certain things? Because that is your leverage. If the court has had came out and made a judgment about a certain thing that a creditor and creditor cannot do, that's your leverage to put that, uh, to change the playing field to make it better for you to get something removed and fixed. You know, we gotta, you know, I keep it real with you on this credit channel. You know, a lot of people that do this or in this industry, and I have to be the first one to tell them, quit making up tricks and gimmicks that don't always work and then charge people for it. And then our consumers don't get what they're supposed to get out of it. Like that's not what it's all about for me. It's all about, I'm going to tell you the truth about it. I'm going to tell you what you have to do. I'm going to tell you, say, you're going to have to settle this debt. It's reporting correctly on your credit report. Unless you can find something that says that it's inaccurate or they're doing something that's illegal, it's going to be on there, right? If it have not reached the statutory limitations, all that type of stuff, that's where this channel is all about. It's all about bringing you the real deal about credit and not about just trying to get you into the door and feed you something you don't get the results that you got to get so we're gonna i'm gonna give you the truth about 1099 c's today today is the truth day about 1099 c's and we're gonna talk about some strategies that may work when what uh, uh when trying to get a charge off or 1099 c things you do and don't want to do so you know the deal that's how we bring it on this channel and, um, you know, but next, I just want to say I appreciate all my new subscribers. Hey, do me a favor. Share the channel, right? You know, like the channel, you know, continue to say, hey, Larry, I appreciate you being honest about credit. And we need to get more honesty out there to all the people about credit. So share my channel. If you know somebody got some credit issues, share my channel. You know, yes, I do have a master to dispute package. Uh, I'm, I'm always adding things to it and I have people that purchase this package all the time and I appreciate and thank you everybody that purchased this package. You know, I'm here to help you. I, I'm not here to to uh, feed you a bunch of stuff and get you in the door to get you to pay me all this crazy amount of money. That's not what I'm about. I'm blessed. Uh, thank the, the Lord and Savior that I'm a blessed man and I'm able to come out and give you the real deal. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it's all about. Yes, I can help you repair your credit. Yes, I can. I, yes, I will give you a free credit analysis and go over the credit with you. Take the time. You can read out, leave a comment. What if thou actually answer the phone? Will he actually reach out to you and talk to you? Ask the questions and you can get your own feedback. The truth is in the pudding, as they say. So I am truly here to help you. I've been in your shoes. Uh, I know how it's changed my life when I understood credit, and I promise you it changed my life. And me and my wife, uh, you know, we're going to do another, we did a video when I first started, we're going to do a follow-up video together that how it has changed our lives when I understood credit uh, and all that. Uh, and understanding credit got me into investing, and that's, it just, it became like a tree and then that knowledge continued to grow. It just changed my financial, it just changed my financial path. It wasn't about the amount of money that we was making because we, me and my wife always, my wife's a nurse, I'm an operational manager, we always make good money. But it ain't about how much you make, it's about what you do, what you make, and understand how to grow your wealth, right? So that's what it's all about, enough of that. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for all my new subscribers. You know the deal. Like, subscribe, and share. And uh, I appreciate y'all. So let's get into this video. We're going to talk about a 1099C. If you see me look down, it's because I got a lot of information. I've been doing a lot of research on this uh, because I wanted to bring you the truth and not just cover some BS and leave you hanging. So we're going to talk about what is a 1099C. So first of all, a 1099C is when a creditor 
has deemed this uh, this debt or this account unrecoverable, irrecoverable, and they're going to stop collection activities. So they're trying to reduce their tax burden because that is lost income. So the IRS say you are required, listen, what I'm telling you, required to submit a 1099-C, right? And that reduces their tax burden. When they get that 1099 IRS, they are required to send you that 1099C because the IRS has on record that they they took a tax, they got uh they reduced their tax burden, which says because you failed on a debt, that now that tax burden uh you reduce it. So now the consumer, we know that consumer had reduced their tax uh I mean, did not pay this debt. And because they did not pay the debt, now the IRS looks at that as that is your income. Now you put that back into your income. Now they're going to tax your income on that debt. So if you have a $10,000 debt, right, hypothetically, and they wrote that whole $10,000 off, what the IRS is saying that you put that money back into your income. So now we're going to tax that $10,000 back into your income. In a nutshell, that's what it's all about. Now, let's talk about, and it goes the other way. If you settle, and we're going to talk about the differences between if they wrote off the whole debt versus you settled the debt. So the other thing is, okay, maybe you called the creditor. Hey, I want to settle this debt. And you owe ten thousand dollars, but you settled for ten two thousand, which left a remaining balance of eight thousand. They still have to issue that ten ninety nine C. They're gonna send you a ten ninety nine C for the eight thousand. You're gonna have to add that into your income and be taxed. It could raise your taxes uh, burden. It may not, depending on how you fall in the tax bracket. So. That's in a nutshell what a 1099, but we're going to get a little deeper. First, I'm going to read something to you that talks about what the Internal Revenue Service says about a 1099-C. And this is what it says. It says a creditor sometimes write off debt due to several reasons like long time, long time payment, default or bankruptcy. In such cases, the creditor stopped its collection efforts, declare that the debt is irrecoverable and reported to the IRS as lost income. Listen to that and remember that lost income to reduce their tax burden. The creditor will report the amount as lost income to the IRS via a 1099-C during the year the write-off was put, take, put in place, right? Now, I want, that's what that 1099-C is all about. That's how the IRS looks at it. Now, let's get a little deeper. It says, now, this is what I tell you, and I'm be upfront with you. You should always try to settle and get a 1099-C, and I'll explain that a little bit later in this video. Why? Because of this. This depends on how the debt has been forgiven. Now, it's all about making sure the creditor has forgiven that debt. Well, a lot of people make mistakes, and then I'm telling you is that if a creditor, right, I'm going to read this to you. If a creditor writes off an entire debt, it does not mean that they have they have to stop collection activities. And I can tell you, this is what the court says, right? In certain districts, the court has said that just because in their court cases, and I'll give you some, you can look them up. And this is always in my dispute package if you don't believe me. And this information is in STCNW Attorneys at Law. They wrote up this thing about the issuance of a 1099-C in the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And I'm going to read some things off of there. So, uh, so it's all about making sure they forgive because once they've forgiven the debt, now they no longer can go after you for the debt. Sometimes people get confused on when they, does the 1099C mean that I no longer owe, owe the debt that they've forgiven? Does not mean that unless you have settled the debt and they forgave the debt. Remember that. Uh, this depends, and I'm gonna read something to you. This depends on how the debt was forgiven. 
Give you an example. If you made a settlement with your credit card company, that means you made a deal with them to pay a percentage of what you owe. Remember that you made a deal and then that can be in a lump sum on installment payment. So you made a deal with. So once you made that deal, like I will pay a percentage of what I owe. And then if you would please issue me that 1099 C and I'm going to write it off. Again, we're going to talk about some strategies on that. So that is the main thing you need to understand. The difference, if they, again, if they wrote off the entire amount, say you owe $10,000 and then they reduced their tax burden with the IRS and gave a 1099-C and then they turned around and issued you that 1099 for $10,000, that does not mean that they, they have to stop collection activities against you, right? This is where it gets, this is where it gets really good, right? And this is why you want to settle versus letting them write it off. Like you want to hit the, in the head. We have to get away from allowing a debt to get so far that they sell it to a collection agency. We want to get past that. We want to get it, hit it at the head, chop the head off, right? So, and I'm explain to you why. So those are some of the main things. So I want to read something to you too. And this is out of the, <clears throat> uh, this SWC and W uh, uh, attorneys at law wrote up about the insurance of a 1099C and the Fair Credit Reporting Act, right? And this is important. These are the things that you need to understand when it comes to that. Don't let people tell you, uh, just get you a 1099C and it's going to come off. It could possibly, but it's how you address that. So I want to read something to you. And this is from the article that these attorney at law read, uh, wrote up. They, they, the insurance of a 1099C and the Fair Credit Reporting Act. That's the title. There is no, listen what I'm telling you. There is no bright line rule regarding what should be reported on the consumer's fair credit reporting when a 1099 is issued. Although the IRS has provided some guidance in various information letters, federal and state courts have interpreted the IRS guidelines in different ways. Nationwide, court differs as rather an issuing of a 1099-C extinguishes a debt and prohibits a creditor from pursuing collection or reporting the debt. While it appears that the district and court circuits are holding that the existence of a 1099-C form does not alone operate to distinguish a debt, some courts of limited jurisdictions have held that it is inequitable, meaning unfair, to allow a creditor to belatedly enforce the alleged debt after they received a tax benefit of the charge off. So that's what the court says, right? So there is no line that says if you get a 1099C, it automatically comes off, right? But some courts have uh, in some jurisdictions just said, hey, it's unfair. How can you take a tax uh, credit or reduce your tax burden and then still go after the consumer for the debt or report the debt after you just got a benefit from the debt, right? So this is what we're going to talk about a little later on some strategies that you need to do. If you want to know more about a 1099C, you need to just look up in the IRS in section 1-6050P, right? You can look it up and it has a lot of information in there. Uh, uh, now, when does, uh, what triggers a 1099C? A 1099C is issued when in, uh, when a dis, uh, indebtedness, excuse me, an indebtedness of a person of at least $600 or more. For example, you have that $10,000 debt, you settle for a thousand, that's $9,000. It's going to trigger a 1099C. But say you have a debt that's a thousand, you paid 500. 
that does not trigger that 1099C because it has to be $600 or more, right? So it doesn't trigger that. So it has to be at least six, <clears throat> excuse me, hundred dollars or more to trigger a 1099C, right? So that is what is so important. That's the trigger point. Now I want to read something. I want to read something else to you, right? Uh, the court also says this. <clears throat> just because. Uh, Oh, let me let me get down and, and and read this all the way at the bottom because I want to just get down to the conclusion and we're going to talk about some strategies and what you what I would do and what I I have done with a Capital One and that I had a car that uh, blew the engine on it on my way to the racetrack. I mean, um, I, you know, I, I I love fast cars, building car. I like doing all that stuff. So. But anyway, on my way to the racetrack, blew the engine, owed nineteen thousand dollars on this uh, Dodge Charger. Uh, eventually, I settled with them for twenty seven fifty, which reduced my tax burden. I mean, which increased my tax burden, and they wrote me a ten ninety nine C Capital One. Removed that after I settled and removed that off my credit report. It is no longer on my credit report, right? So, so there are ways to get it off, and I'm going to tell you how and how you should address it when dealing with the original creditor and a 1099C. So let me get down to the bottom. Uh, as such, there is no bright line rule regarding whether an issue of 1099C and discharge and indebtedness. Furthermore, as this is still a developing area of law, there are no cases to date that explicitly state what should be reported on a consumer's credit report when a 1099C is issued, or rather a satisfaction of judgment must be filed after the issuance of a 1099C. So, but this is the thing, the difference. You need to, this is the strategy that I would tell you, and I just want to cut through all the chase, right? One thing you have to understand, uh, and let me talk about some things that are illegal. I'm sorry because I'm moving fast and I'm I'm skipping some things. A collection company cannot cannot issue you a 1099C for one. They're not the original creditor. They're not writing that off on their taxes. So if a, a creditor sends you a 1099C, then you should be contacting the Federal Trade Commission about that. And you need to be contacting your state attorney general. They cannot do that. The next thing you need to understand is that a original creditor must file and is required to file a 1099C if they wrote off a debt and they filed it on their taxes. What should you do? The first thing, if you see a charge off on your credit report, you should be contacting the eternal, I mean, excuse me, the original creditor. And you should be asking them, did you charge off this debt? Yes, we charged off this debt. Have you filed this debt on your uh, taxes as lost debt or lost income? And have you received a tax credit for the write-off? You can ask and they must tell you that if they because if they did and you never issued a 1099 C, you'll be able. That's a strategy to get that off your credit report because they're in violation and it comes with a hefty fine. Right. So you need to understand that it is required for them to file that 1099 C. They also have a 36 month rule meaning that they can carry that debt for 36 months, three years, and not file a 1099C. This is ugly. It ain't fair, right? But they, they do have like a 36-month rule. They changed the rules up a little bit, but that is one of the rules that they have. It is an older rule, but it's a 36-month rule. Well, they have to file. They have up to 36 months to file that. Right. So if they file it three years later, then issue you a 1099C on a debt that was three years old. They're within their right to do that. Right. So uh, they could hold on to that debt. Maybe they want to file a uh, tax burden that year. Maybe they're waiting for a year. It may be a bad year and they need some extra tax burdens. And that's what they do. 
whatever. But that's what they that's what they can do for uh, up to three years and wait to file it. Right. So but if they don't file and they do file, you didn't get a 1099C. That is a violation through the IRS. And you can file a, a, a complaint with the IRS that you never received the 1099C. And you can get with that creditor and say, you never issued me a 1099C. And you wrote this off your credit report. And they sold it to a collection company. Come on, think about that. So, you know, what I would do is write a letter, write a letter to the original creditor. And you can do this. If you don't want to call them, do it within an affidavit requesting fact. That's what affidavit is. Information of fact. Write them an affidavit and say, I am requesting the information. Have you filed this or charged this off on your taxes and took a <clears throat> and reduced your tax burden when you wrote this off. Did you file a 1099C with the Internal Revenue Service? You get that letter back and they say, yes, they did. And then you ask, when did you file it? Right. Remember, them affidavits are really powerful. Right. Because if there's any violation, that is your leverage to get that removed off your credit report. I'll tell you, I come deep. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll look at things. And what does the court say? You know, what do people do when they go after uh, original creditors for certain instances? And what does the court say? So if you sent that affidavit and they reply, yes, we filed an, a 1099C on you in 10, uh, 2020. You never received it. It's 2021. Man, there go your leverage to get it off. Now I'm sending a letter saying I never was issued a 1099C. And then will you please remove this from my credit report? <clears throat> Just say they do. Now we're going to move to the next strategy. Just say they do issue you a 1099C. Remember, that 1099C that they issued you became income on your taxes, right? So it reduced their tax burden, but increased your tax burden, right? So I'd write a letter saying, you, I received the 1099C which reduced your tax burden, right? And you increased my tax burden. It is unfair for you to receive that and then turn around and cause income against me on my tax. I've settled with you because you've also settled. Could you please remove this in good faith because of the agreement that we made to settle this debt and remove this from my credit report? That's the strategy. That's the second strategy that you want to come at. Remember, look at it from the forefront, the legal side. Did you did you file a 1099C with the IRS? When did you file that 1099C? What was the date on that 1099C? I did not receive a 1099C and that is required to you for me to get one. If you did get it, second strategy, write them a letter. Let them know you, you filed a 1099C. You reduced your tax burden on that 1099C. Uh, I received that 1090, filed it on my taxes and increased my tax burden. And now out of good faith, can you remove this 1099C because of our agreement and our settlement that we made with each other to, to that you forgave this debt to remove this from my credit report? That's the strategy that you want to come with. And that's what you want to do. Right. So I just wanted to come at you with 1099 C's and give you the real deal about them. Right. And what real strategies could possibly work with you. So if you get if you want more information, you know, the deal, email me, you know, we can talk more about it. We can discuss what your situation is. Again, listen, I will give you a free credit uh, a credit analysis. I mean, I just have to look at your credit. I can't do it over the phone. So you can call me if you don't have credit monitoring. You can sign up with me for credit monitoring one month just for I can pull it. Go over and you can cancel it right after that. Really doesn't make a difference to me. And I can go over with you what's on your credit, what you could do, what you need to do, what's hurting you, what could help you, all of that type of stuff. I am down with you. You know, I'm the guy on YouTube that is down with you and it's going to legitimately help you. If you want to uh, buy my master dispute package, email me. My email is in the description. I got you. You know, if you got questions after you purchase it, I got you. 
if you need help when you purchase it because maybe some things you're not clear on, I got you. I got you. So I'm here to truly help you. I'm blessed. And then for me being blessed, it's all about giving that blessings back to you. So I'm going to keep it real with you. And uh, uh, I want to help you because I'm telling you, I promise you, my life has changed because it, it, it changed because the accessible, the amount of money that I have disposable now to me that I had three years ago, because I opened up this business. I started this credit journey in 2017, opened up my business in 2018 about helping people, right? So you got to look at, so let's say four years from now and really four years because this is around the time I started that journey, the end of this year, the beginning of the following year. I mean, the beginning of the next year and my life has changed. I mean, my life has really changed and my wife's life has changed, right? So I'm here to show you it could be done. No, it's not going to take three months, four months. Uh, it may take you a year, but I'm telling you that clock is going to tick regardless if you do something or don't. So start today so you can get done faster. But hey, I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. This is Larry with Invest and Build Your Credit and Wealth. Come on, hit me up if you got any questions on emails. And then once I use you an email, I tell I give you my phone number and we can have a conversation. Tell me what you need. I got you. Say, hey, y'all have a blessed day and I'm out.